Namaste, and welcome to our continuing series on the life divine with our beloved Ranga. We are on page 348, Brahman, Purusha, Ishwara, beginning with the line, the same conciliation occurs everywhere. So, the chapter is Brahman, Purusha, Ishwara, Maya Prakriti Shakti. Depending on which plane of consciousness you are, you see the reality in a particular way. There is nothing fixed about the way you see things on each plane and each individual also can see in a different way. But the absolute reality is only at the highest level. All the other levels are relative. Depending on your nature depending on the height at which plane you are and from which angle of vision you are seeing. Even from the same plane of consciousness, two individuals can see in different ways depending on their nature. So even the over-mental is in this area? Uh, the over-mental also, you can have two different views. Mm -hmm. Just to expand on that point a little bit, you see, if you are at the over-mental level and you are experiencing that, you are experiencing Sat, Chit, Ananda, but you are experiencing more of Sat and less of the other two, okay, you will have a certain philosophy. You ah. will have the philosophy of the Advaita philosophy. If you are more leaning towards the Chit Shakti, then you will have the Sankhya philosophy. Purusha Prakriti separate forever. If you are more into the Ananda aspect, then you are, you will see the physical world as a Leela, as a play of the divine. So, that's exactly what I am saying. Everything is relative, except the highest level. That's only absolute. And even there, there is no absolutism anywhere. You go, go, it's always constantly going up, going up. Probably the absolute, absolute, no man has ever reached. It's possible. <laughs> because even if you reach it, you can't come back to give a report. <laughs> the link with the physical world is cut and you can't come back to give a I report. See. But when Sri Aurobindo said we have to come back to the earth, yes. from what plane was he talking? The he is talking from this up to the spirit, up to the uh, overmind it is possible. And it has to be done also for the supermind. But once you have done that, then the areas open up for higher and higher. It's exactly like in mountain climbing, you first conquer Kanchin Janga, but the Everest is still there. Then you conquer that. It's also like going into space. You have gone to the moon, but you have not yet gone to Mars. It's a little farther away. But once you go to Mars, the possibility of going even further is there. So, the range of consciousness expands as you keep going higher and higher. The known area to man goes on expanding. So, there is no limit to what man can experience. But at present, he cannot go beyond the supermind. If he goes, the link is cut, he can't come back. But once he has been able to establish that, probably the capacity to come back even from a higher level will be built. It's like building a road, no? When you have built a road up to a certain point, beyond that you still can't go. So you have to build the road. It's exactly the same in the spiritual field also. And that was what Sri is doing, building the road to the supermind. And once that is done, it becomes easy for everybody else. And mother in the 23 years after he left? Yes. She that's was what, doing the same? She was doing the same below. Ah. Yeah. She was working on the body and taking the inconscient, making the inconscient open so that it receives the light. If you want to go back to the image of the dark sea, she is making sure that the lower levels of the sea are not as dark as before. She is purifying the substance there so that the light can enter more easily. That's the work she was doing at the body level. It's fantastic. 
And that was after 1956 when she yes. broke it open. Yes. And the supermind right. flooded years. That's right. And she went on working. So work. from 56 to 73. Yes. I see. That's the work she was doing. And to be more specific about the work that she was doing, it's worth looking at it. Okay. You have, you means all living creatures. They have started from matter. Out of matter has come life. But even life has come in grades. First you have the unicellular organism. Then you have small, small, small animalcules, as he says. Very small. Then you come to maybe caterpillars and worms and all. And then it goes on higher and higher. So the darkness of matter is still exists in you. Okay? You are... Because you are starting from here. So, it is still dragging you down, dragging you down. So, what happens at the level of multiplicity in the physical world? Multiplicity means you are different from everybody else. Agreed? I am not, even at our level, I feel myself to be separate from you. But that sense of separation starts at the, in matter. Each atom is separate from everything else. Now, if you are separate, you have to protect yourself because the other may be friendly but he may also be enemical because the infinite possibilities are there. So nature gives you the self-defense mechanism of fear. Now, mother has to fight and remove fear from every cell. That would open up the possibility of the light coming into the at that level in the matter. Can you imagine the enormity of the task? <laughs> because the evolution has started from matter and all the limitations of matter has been conquered. I give you only one example of the, the element of fear and that is necessary. If fear is not there, you will not be able to protect yourself. If someone comes to attack me and I have no fear, he will simply kill me. <laughs> So fear is a mechanism of... I am only giving one example. But mother wanted us to get rid of fear. At which level? I don't know. At the psychological level it is relatively easy. Uh -huh. But can you do that at the cellular level? <laughs> I see. That's the work she was doing. It's fantastic what she But what she has done, it remains. It is recorded and remains. And the next person who comes, it will become easier to start from there and not from somewhere else. Let's get back to our text. <laughs> um, I'll do one thing. I'll read out the summary of the previous one so that we get the hmm. sense of continuity. Yeah. When we look closely at the problem of these contradictions, spirit and matter, the infinite and the finite, the one and the many, light and darkness, they all seem to be opposites, contradictions. But when we look closely at the problem of these contradictions, we see that it is merely verbal. Okay? There is no contradiction. They are Two ends of the same spectrum. Same spectrum, but two ends. One positive, one negative. Like light, when it starts reducing itself, reducing itself, it is still light. But when it reduces itself fully, it is still light which has reduced itself. So there is no contradiction between darkness and light. But this you can see only at the higher level. Here is a mental conception, that's not enough. Okay? That's what he's saying. So, there is no contradiction. Okay? It's merely verbal. The infinite of the absolute creates the multitudinous forms of the universe even while remaining itself free from all its determinations. Determinations. The indeterminability of the absolute does not mean that it is incapable of determining itself to forms. If it were so, it would not be the absolute. 
That's what Srimadha is saying. In other words, there is no contradiction between spirit and matter. And Srimadha has to necessarily establish this to make his point that a divine life on earth is possible. Those who say that there is a basic contradiction between the two, they will never be able to admit that a divine life is possible on earth. That's what they say. Here impossible. So go there if you want the divine. So Srimadha is constantly, so much of logic and life divine is mainly that. The possibility of a divine life on earth. Okay? So, this is what he said in the previous one. Now we come back to what we have to read today. The same conciliation occurs everywhere. When we look with a straight and accurate look on the truth of the reality, in our experience of it, we become aware of an infinite, essentially free from all limitation by qualities, properties, features. On the other hand, we are aware of an infinite teeming with innumerable qualities, properties, features. Here again, the statement of illimitable freedom is positive, not negative. It does not negate what we see, but on the contrary, provides the indispensable condition for it. It makes possible a free and infinite self-expression in quality and feature. A quality is a character of a power of conscious being. Or we may say that the consciousness of our being, of being, expressing what is in it, makes a power it brings out, recognizable by a native stamp on which we call a native stamp on it, on it, which we call quality or character. Now he is giving examples. Courage as a quality is such a power of being. It is a certain character of my consciousness expressing a formulated force of my being, bringing out or creating a definite kind of force of my nature in action. So too, the power of a drug to cure is its property, a special force of being native to the herb or mineral from which it is produced. And this speciality is determined by the real idea concealed in the involved consciousness which dwells in the plant or mineral. The idea brings out in it what was there at the root of its manifestation and has now come out thus empowered as a force of its being. All qualities, properties, features are such powers of conscious being thus put forth from itself by the Absolute. It has everything within it. It has the free power to put all forth. Yet, we cannot define the Absolute as a quality of courage or a power of healing. We cannot even say that these are a characteristic feature of the Absolute. Nor can we sum up, nor can we make up a sum of qualities and say that is the Absolute. But neither can we speak of the Absolute as a pure blank, incapable of manifesting these things. On the contrary, all capacity is there. The powers of all qualities and characters are there inherent within it. The mind is in a difficulty because it has to say, the Absolute or Infinite is none of these things. These things are not the Absolute or Infinite. And at the same time it has to say, the Absolute is all these things. They are not something else than that. For that is the sole existence and the all existence. Here it is evident that it is an undue finiteness of thought, of thought conception, and verbal expression, which creates a difficulty. But there is in reality none, for 
it would be evidently absurd to say that the absolute is courage or curing power or to say that courage and curing power are the absolute but it would be equally absurd to deny the capacity of the absolute to put forth courage or curing power as self expressions in its manifestation when the logic of the finite fails us we have to see with a direct and unbound vision what is behind in the logic of the infinite we can then realize that the infinite is infinite in quality feature power but that no sum of qualities features powers can describe the infinite so basically the same thing being repeated in different words okay that there is no contradiction between and at the highest level the infinite contains all the possible finites and the finite here contains the infinite in itself so it's only a question of development and manifestation that's basically what he's saying the same conciliation occurs everywhere when we look with a straight and accurate look on the truth of the reality so first of all you must have the capacity to, to look at the reality and look at it with a straight and accurate look i think if you don't have a straight and accurate look you cannot see the reality <laughs> you have to see it with a, a straight and accurate reality and reality with an r cap that means the essential reality okay in our experience of it in our experience of it we become aware of an infinite essentially free from all limitation by qualities properties features in fact if the finite could be we could see the features then it would not be infinite if the infinite you can see qualities it is determined it is conditioned by these so it has to be necessarily without features that's why it is featureless and immutable <laughs> okay that's what he is saying in our experience we become aware of an infinite essentially free from all limitation by qualities properties features but this is essentially free but it has the capacity to produce anything it wants but you can't see it <laughs> like the chromosomes in the body contain the genetic code of the whole being you go down there the rna and the dna they are only little bits but those little bits determine the color of your hair the color of your skin the shape of your nose everything and they say that now they call it the genome okay and the mm, man can be defined with this 33000 something like that 33000 units of description then you can more or less have this and the funny part is that you would think that a fly can have less no Oh, well, that's not true. <laughs> It is equal number of uh, thing. <laughs> so these are the mysteries of uh, the. <laughs> so the infinite contains all the finites, but you can't see them. <laughs> that's what he's saying. If you can see them, it can't be infinite. But the finite contains in itself the infinite. Yes. but you can't see it no what is involved and that's why it can evolve <laughs> yes and that's why there is evolution there is a involution and there is evolution okay so on the other hand we are aware of an infinite teeming with innumerable qualities properties features when you are in the physical world you see all the features and qualities and the um characteristics you see them okay so here again the statement of illimitable freedom 
is positive, not negative. When you see the infinite without features, you can't say that it is incapable of features. It is capable of features. And when you see the finite with features, a stone is solid, it has color, it has this, it has that, but it contains all the possibilities that can evolve out of it because the infinite is there in it. And this is much more true of man because man can become the infinite. You have come from the stone, you have come from matter. So slowly at your level, now you can become the infinite. At the earlier levels, it's a slow process. But now with man, it can become a conscious process. And accelerated. Yes. He also, because of that, the evolution is accelerated with the advent of man. Okay. So, here again the statement of illimitable freedom is positive, not negative. You shouldn't say that the infinite is incapable of features, qualities, characteristics. It is capable. You can't, otherwise it wouldn't be the absolute. <laughs> okay. With innumerable. Not negative. It does not negate what we see, but on the contrary, provides the indispensable condition for it. The infinite makes the finite possible. He's saying if the infinite is not there, the finite cannot exist. Just as he says, the silence makes the movement possible. Uh, we gave an example of the, uh, the river and the glacier. If the glacier which is static, is not really static, but you can consider it static, the river wouldn't exist if the glacier is not there. So the silence is absolutely essential for the movement. The movement cannot exist without the silence. But the silence can exist without the movement. The world cannot exist by itself. But the spirit can exist by itself. It does not. The two always go together. <laughs> but this is the... Causally, it is like that. Not sequentially in time. Okay, so... It does not negate what we see, but on the contrary, provides an indispensable condition for it. Makes possible a free and infinite self-expression in quality and feature. A quality is the character of a power of conscious being. Or we may say that the consciousness of being expressing what is in it makes the power it brings, it brings out recognizable by a native stamp on it which we call quality or character. So he's going to give us the examples of quality and character. Okay. Quality. Courage as a quality is such a power of being. It is a certain character of my consciousness. By the way, when he's saying my consciousness, he's not referring to his own consciousness. He is just saying generally. Right. It's a way of speaking. Okay. Mm. It is a uh, character of my consciousness expressing a formulated force of my being, bringing out or creating a definite kind of force of my nature in action. So too, the power of a drug to cure is its property. A special force of being native to the herb or mineral from which it is produced. And this speciality is determined by the real idea concealed in the involved consciousness which dwells in the plant or mineral. So, from where does this quality and features come? They all come from the real idea. Again, we go back to the idea of the blueprint and the actual, finally, the building being built. The building was conceived first in the mind of the architect and he has made a blueprint. But even more subtle than the blueprint is the idea in his head. So that would be the super mind. And there, 
everything that it wants to produce is there but as a raw material it's not formed yet as it keeps coming down it gets formed more and more more and more definite more and more definite that is the reason why swamlo could say in 1920 india will be free but the time was not clear so the basic idea that india will be free is it took 33 years na huh, for it to happen why 33 uh, 37 years 1920 So I'm not saying India is free. So that's a real idea, and it takes time for it to manifest in the physical world. I'm interested in this root of the plant. The root of the plant ah. is speaking next. Yeah, that's right. Very interesting. Yeah, he's saying. So too, the power of a drug to cure is its property, a special force of being native to the herb or mineral from which it is produced, and this speciality is determined by the real idea concealed in the involved consciousness which dwells in the plant or mineral. The idea brings out in it what was there at the root of its manifestation. The root of the manifestation is the super mind, and has now come out thus. empowered as a force of its being so everything that is planned there becomes a reality here i don't think any scientist understands this yet not yet not yet because this is so important to me uh, when i work with plants that to know that that power of consciousness is already in the plant that's right and especially in the flower yes. and when mother has named the flower that's right it's even more direct absolutely but there are many flowers she didn't name that still have names but we have to find out yes how to name them that's right so to do that you have to go to the subtle plane see the reality of that plant yes. and the name will be revealed to you if mother could do it theoretically it is possible for others to do it provided you have the capacity to go into the subtler plane and see the reality of that plant mm -hmm. so all qualities properties features are such powers of conscious being thus put forth from itself by the absolute so the, it has everything within it it has free power to put all forth now there is a footnote to that so it has a free power to put all forth let's see what the footnote is the word for creation in sanskrit means a losing or putting forth of what is in the being the word is srij the root is srij <coughs> srijati creates what is there in it it's a sort of oozing out So creation is nothing but an oozing out. It's not creating something that didn't exist. It exists in potential. Now you're only expressing it. That's why you put that. And in Sanskrit, that's the interesting part. The language is built in such a way that the root movement is there in every root, in every uh, dhatu. Dhatu is the root of each word. So you have to go to the root, and then from that meaning, it can go here. It can go here. It can go here. It depends on the context in Sanskrit. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it can mean opposite things, <laughs> the same word. <laughs> We have certain words in English also, which have two opposite meanings. Even the same spelling. Uh, yes, the very same word. Yeah. yeah. For instance, cleave. Cleave, yes. So cleaving is to hang on to something, okay? Or to cut to it. Or to cut. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So like that in Sanskrit, many many words, most of the words are like that. <laughs> you have to see the context. <laughs> the mind is in a difficulty because it has to say the absolute or infinite is none of these things. The absolute and infinite, if you say it is power to cure or it is courage, you are limiting it. It also has the opposite of courage. It can also be cowardice. that also is a possibility <laughs> so the absolute has to contain all possibilities 
So you can't say that it is only this. The mind is in a difficulty because it has to say the absolute or finite is none of these things. These things are not the absolute or infinite. And at the same time, it has to say the absolute is all these things. They are not something else than that. For that is the sole existence and the all existence. So. Uh, this idea, I think we have discussed also once before. The human being is not a collection of organs. He is much more than that. He is a collection of organs which are working in complete harmony with each other. So you are going beyond the summation of organs. He is much more than. Heart plus liver plus uh, blood plus uh, face plus eyes, ears are much more than that. So that's what the infinity is also. Hmm. Infinity is not a sum of everything that exists. It's much more than that. Here it is evident that it is. An undue finiteness of thought, conception, and verbal expression, which creates a difficulty, but there is in reality none. For it would be evidently absurd to say that the absolute is courage or curing power, or to say that courage and curing power are the absolute. But it would be equally absurd to deny the capacity of the absolute to put forth courage. Or curing power as self-expressions of its manifestation. It is much more than that. When the logic of the finite fails us, we have to see with a direct and unbound vision what is behind in the logic of the infinite. We can then realize that the infinite is infinite in quality, feature, power, but that no sum. Of qualities, features, and powers can describe the infinite. This is very interesting because in the Jain philosophy also we have the same idea. Okay, he says that if you want to describe something, okay, let's say I want to describe this table, I can say it is made of wood. I can say its color is brown. I can say it weighs so much. I can say its volume is so much. Have I exhausted it? No. There are many more things which I have not said. It has got four legs. It has got this. It has got that. And each leg is at each corner, not in the middle. I can go on, go on, go on. Does that exhaust all the possibilities of the description of the table? No. Now I have to say what it is not. I have to say it is not red. It is not metal. It is not this. It is not that. Nathi, Nathi, Nathi. It goes on, goes on. So that's the reason why they say it's a very interesting way of looking at things. You can never say of something. All you can say is it could be this. It could be that. <laughs> that's the reality. Because you see it as real, another angle you see it as not real. <laughs> so there is no certainty about anything in the Jain philosophy. Only at the highest level there is. So that completes the paragraph. The same logic he is using everywhere. Essentially, what he is saying is, the infinite contains all the finites and more, because. Many things have not yet been manifested. It can go on manifesting eternally. There is no end to what it can produce, and the finite also contains all the features, but it has to evolve them out of itself. So, let's take nature. Nature is constantly experimenting with new forms. Yes, I'm beginning to see them in the plant world. Yes. That's it. Whether it be animals, whether it be flora or fauna, there is an infinite production going on. So, if you see from that point of view, uh, nature is not worried about experimenting and throwing away something. It has experimented and thrown away the mammoth. It has experimented and thrown away the pterodactyl. 
the huge it has experimented and thrown away the dinosaur but it's going on producing other things which we don't see why because its production is mutation of cells and it takes a long time over a hundred year period you will see new things appearing but not in short term in my lifetime i may not say i may discover but that's something else i may not have seen something that nature has produced in fact we are constantly discovering new species we are seeing mm-hmm. so they have evolved over many many years <laughs> so nature is going on producing yes and when she is producing she is enjoying herself she is creating and creating them for the consciousness to enjoy that's what sandra says but nature is the infinite manis the infinite is manis manifesting through nature yeah yeah it is one of the things but it's also manifesting through consciousness it's also manifesting through ananda okay sat chit shakti ananda it's manifesting each of these things if you take sat okay subtle matter when it comes down here it is produced 120 elements but the way the guarantee that is not producing more it may be producing more and how will it produce more simply by compression how do we get a diamond is nothing but carbon <laughs> so you can't say that carbon is the only form diamond is formed by pressure of carbon na huh? so like that so, so many things hmm. is going on producing <laughs> so nature is producing infinitely <laughs> so there is lot more to be produced we have not yet produced everything we see that the absolute the self the divine the spirit the being is one the transcendental is one the cosmic is one but we see also that beings are many and each has a self a spirit a like yet different nature and since the spirit and essence of things is one we are obliged to admit that all these many must be that one and it follows that the one is or has become many but how can the limited or relative be the absolute and how can man or beast or bird be the divine being but in erecting the apparent contradiction the mind makes a double error it is thinking in the terms of mathematical finite unit which is soul in limitation the one which is less than two and can become two only by division and fragmentation or by addition and multiplication but this is a an infinite oneness not a limited not a mathematical oneness it is the essential and infinite oneness which can contain the hundred and the thousand and the million and billion and trillion <laughs> whatever astronomic or more than astronomic figures you heap and multiply they cannot overpass or exceed that oneness for in the language of the upanishad it moves not yet it is always far in front of you far in front when you would pursue and seize it it can be said of it that it would not be the infinite oneness if it were not capable of an infinite multiplicity but that does not mean that the one is plural or can be limited or described as a sum of the many on the contrary it can be the infinite many because it exceeds all limitation or description by multiplicity and exceeds at the same time all limitation by finite conceptual oneness pluralism is an error because though there is a spiritual plurality the many souls are dependent and interdependent existences their sum also is not the one nor is it the cosmic totality 
they depend on the one and exist by its oneness yet the plurality is not unreal it is the one soul that dwells as the individual in these many souls and they are eternal in the one and by the one eternal this is difficult for the mental reason which makes an opposition between the infinite and the finite and associates finiteness with plurality and infinity with oneness but in the logic of the infinite there is no such opposition and the eternity of the many in the one is a thing that is perfectly natural and possible it's a big para essentially what he is saying is if you go back to the sea and the waves it becomes very clear all the waves are really the sea they are one so each wave may be different one may be 10 meters long one may be 20 meters long one may be 5 meters high another will be 10 centimeters high okay they are all different yet they are all the sea so there is no essential contradiction between the one and the many they are really involved with each other that's what he is saying the example of the sea and the waves is very interesting which explains this fact also we can say also in so many different ways my body your body her body everybody's body seems to be different essentially it is only matter but we don't see that at this level when we go to the higher mind we start seeing the oneness of things or in the advaita philosophy they talk of gold ornaments rings necklaces armlets okay anklets okay um nose rings all these keep on the table they are all forms but what are they essentially they are different but what are they essentially gold exactly the i can melt all these forms and make new forms i can make infinite forms out of this gold so that's what basically he's saying there's no contradiction between form and formless there's no contradiction between the one and the many when we read sri arbindo we don't argue it we see that it is even with our limited mentality we feel that it is true absolutely because we have faith because our faith is there that what he is saying must be the truth but he puts life divine in such a way that he is answering one who can challenge you so he takes you by the hand and slowly shows that's why so much of logic is there okay so but ultimately you have to he says in the synthesis he says here also that all this we are telling you but if you have faith in what is being said you will see that the faith is justified in the end so if you are if you don't want to believe what is being said fine but you will have to discover for yourself and ultimately you may discover that all that is being said is right <laughs> that's why it's called the sanatana dharma the dharma which is essentially true forever <laughs> not religion but the spiritual truths that's the thing when these i don't want to say evangelists but but brilliant brilliant men speak about religious things what level are they speaking from depends on the individual na no? depends on the individual depends on the individual yeah okay. at what level he is yeah. but i must say one thing scientists are slowly beginning to understand these things there are so many discussions with uh, enlightened people and they don't start arguing straight away some do but they beginning to understand and the whole change came because of that one thing in science that uh, the quantum theory 
that destroyed all their fixity of thinking so that science became philosophy when the quantum theory came into existence <laughs> so science has become so now there is a great interchange in uh, scientific thinking they are going nearer and nearer to the truth <laughs> i believe sri arbindo said they were approaching it from the bottom and spirituality was approaching it from the top that's right how beautiful and that's a symbol of sri arbindo's uh, the symbol of sri arbindo the two triangles the ascent and the descent and the perfect manifestation is square in the middle that's a perfect so when we accept both the divine as well as the physical world and the divine working without limitation in the physical world that would be the perfect manifestation madhav used to tell me that there would be no evolution without involution that's right how can there be evolution if there's no involution exactly How can the tree exist without the seed? Thank you, Ranga. Namaste, all. Thank you.